In this video, I share my own personal recommendations for using iRacing in VR with the Quest 3, updated to include the new native fixed foveated rendering MVP feature introduced recently by iRacing. So let's take a look at this exciting feature from an older gamer's perspective. Normally I create a graphics settings guide video for a specific sim racing title about once a year. However, iRacing have recently introduced and a Apologies for the cliche, a groundbreaking feature in the shape of NVP, multi-view projection. So clearly my graphical recommendations video needs an update. MVP gives VR users a dramatic performance boost by natively adding fixed foveated rendering to iRacing itself, which means you no longer have to rely on doing something similar with the Oculus Debug Tool or with the OpenXR Toolkit. With that in mind, in this video, I'm going to lay out my recommended graphical settings for using the Quest 3 with iRacing, which hopefully will create the best possible VR experience for those of you currently struggling to get a decent and reliable FPS. I will also talk about some of the things you are able to do in order to claw back lost performance when struggling with an unreliable FPS performance on say a busy track, even when using my recommended settings. A lot of Quest related and I rating stuff to cover in this video. So let's get straight to it and look at all the various settings I now recommend in 2025 when using the Quest 3 with iRacing. Recommendations. MetaQuest app and Oculus debug tool settings. Let's first establish a baseline for talking about these recommended settings. My PC is a 13600K twinned with a 4070 Super and 64 gig of DDR4 RAM. I also have two separate NVMe drives, one for Windows 11 and the other for iRacing. My Quest 3 is connected to the PC via a USB-C cable that goes directly to a USB-C port on the back of my mainboard. The cable that I've used for many years sadly died a few months back and and I have since replaced it with a new cable from Fiber. This is a 4.5 meter optical cable that cost 45 euros and has this nice 90 degree angled plug for easy attachment to the Quest 3. It's advertised as durable and fast. And when I connected it to the Quest 3, the Meta application registered a test connection speed of somewhere between 2.6 and 2.8 gigabits per second, which is quicker than my old cable. Knowing this is the connection speed I am dealing with, I have the refresh rate set to 90 hertz for 90 FPS in iRacing and the graphic slider set here to 1.5x. This is an improvement on my last video and is mostly to do with the native fixed foveated rendering that is now in iRacing. If you are on a faster system, you might be able to get away with 120 hertz in the Meta app. You might. In the Oculus debug tool, I have set it like this, pretty much as I always have, except foveated tangent multiplier, a favorite of mine for regaining lost performance, is now reset to the defaults of zero and basically turned off. This is because I have found I no longer need it, but you can still combine this setting with the native FFR in iRacing if you want. More on that later. And those are the settings I have outside of iRacing. Before I move on though, just a quick note about the OpenXR Toolkit, which I am only using in the test footage to create the overlay showing FPS and performance overheads. These results that you see here should be taken with a large pinch of salt. They are more indicative of what is happening to the PC during a race rather than actual scientific results. Inside the OpenXR Toolkit, I have every other feature other than overlay turned off. So what you are seeing here is the performance I get on my system without using OpenXR Toolkit. Also note the OpenXR Codec is something separate from the OpenXR Toolkit and the OpenXR Codec should be on your PC by default. But if you want to have the OpenXR Toolkit, you will have to install it. Okay, so now we have established the basic parameters for my recommended settings. Connection by cable, meta app looking like this, and the Oculus debug tool like this. 
Now it's time to move on to the iRacing Graphics tab. Move along, move along. iRacing Graphics tab settings. Okay, so inside iRacing, I have the graphics tab set like this. Let me just break this down for you section by section. I'll be as quick as I can. In the top section, I have resolution set to 720, which only affects the display on the PC monitor. This has no effect on the output to the Quest 3. <laughs> just repeat that. This has no effect on the output to the Quest 3. Also, in this top section, full screen is deselected, but order is selected to stop the mouse wandering outside this window. The important thing here is to change SPS to NVP, but you must reboot the SIM for the MVP setting to take effect. Also note, once the MVP setting has been set, you can only access iRacing via the Open XR option here. Nothing else will work. Lower down in the left section of this tab, I have everything set to low except cars and event, which I have set to full detail. Max cars are set as shown here. The first number is the maximum number of cars you see in front of you. And the second number in brackets is the number of cars you see in the mirrors. The manic level of detail I have set to off as I find allowing iRacing to control the level of detail can cause spikes in performance when using VR, at least on my system. It's one of those settings you need to try to see if you can gain any benefit from it on your system. In the middle section, I have anti-aliasing set to MSAA at 4X with the filter set to sharp. Shadow maps is on in its most basic state, but I leave object self-shadowing, dynamic object shadows and night shadow maps all set to off. At the bottom, shader quality is set to high, as I find setting this to ultra on the 4070 Super can cause problems on busy tracks. If you have a better graphics card, you might be able to turn this one up. In the section on the right, I just have cockpit mirrors set to the max that the car needs, but headlights in those mirrors I have set to low detail. Below that, I have sharpening off, unless I'm using the simple filter next to MSAA, in which case this is on. Everything else here is off except video mem swap and 2048 car textures. SSR is off as it has been reported to be currently not working correctly with NVP and also I find it a huge performance drain on my system. And this is how I have the iRacing graphics tab set on my system using the 4070 Super with the i5 13600K and 64 gig of DDR4 RAM. And this setup on my system gives me this sort of performance headroom on most tracks, even with a crowded grid. If you use the same settings I recommend and everything works for you, that's cool. Go and have some fun. <laughs> Maybe push those settings further if your system can cope with it. However, if you are not getting the performance you need or want, move on to the next section of this video. Knowledge is power. How to claw back performance. These settings I have shown you in the last section of this video will work on most tracks and in most series. In the rookies, the amount of performance headroom you will have left might seem like overkill, but when you enter a busier track, you might start to see a sharp drop in that performance to headroom ratio. So what happens if your FPS starts to tank and you end up with stutters powerful enough to send you off the track? Well, there are options, new ones in fact, thanks to the wonderfulness that is native fixed foveated rendering in iRacing via the new MVP feature. So far in all the test results that I've shown here in this video, I have set the native fixed foveated rendering in iRacing to the defaults, which is foveated outer picked res set at 35 and foveated inset width picked set at 40 as shown here in the OpenXR INI file. A fuller explanation of what these settings mean and what they do can be found in this video, which I will link below. But simply put, you have a range of 25 to 50 to play with on both of these parameters. And if you put in a lower number than the default, say 30 and 35, you will see a performance boost. 
and a better FPS, or at least a more stable FPS. The limitation of this system is that if you try to set either of these parameters lower than 25 or higher than 50, iRacing will edit it back to either 25 or 50 once you load a racing session. The smaller the number on these settings means you are going to see more of the lower resolution in your peripheral vision, which can be an immersion breaker for some people. But that being said, these smaller numbers will give your VR experience a much needed boost in performance. So there are pros and there are cons here. But if you drop both parameters to 25 and you still don't get the FPS you want, don't panic. There are more things you can try. As I mentioned earlier, you can also mix the fixed foveated rendering setting in the Oculus debug tool with the native fixed foveated rendering in eye racing. <laughs> So, so many of these fixed foveated rendering settings, it's easy to get confused. Anyway, but in my tests, it's best to only use the horizontal parameter in the Oculus debug tool for the foveated rendering setting, as using the vertical parameter can push the pixelated resolution zone of the native eye racing fixed foveated rendering setting way up into your main area of vision. And that becomes a massive immersion breaker as it's visible whenever you look down the track. So set horizontal to around 0.8 and leave vertical set to zero to avoid these problems. If none of that is making much difference, especially on a crowded track, then the next easiest performance boost can be found by turning off cockpit mirrors and swapping to a virtual mirror. This can be done in mid-race. Here you can see the cockpit mirrors on the left and the virtual mirror on the right. And there is a gain in performance when using this setting. It's not always there, it's not always visible, but I find with the virtual mirror, there are less drops. Certainly, I don't see any of the massive drops that I get when using the cockpit mirrors. Of course, the virtual mirror usage won't make much difference in the rain or on a very, very crowded track. For this, you may need to turn down MSAA to 2X. But don't forget, you do need to relaunch the sim in order for this change to take effect. The next thing you can try, of course, is dropping the Meta app down to 72 hertz and or reducing the slider position in the app, moving it towards the middle. Try taking this down a step at a time, relaunching iRacing and see what changes this creates, if any. Yes, this is all a very long winded process and there is no secret recipe for every PC out there, even near identical setups will probably need some kind of individual tweaks. So it really is a case of doing something and seeing if it works. It's my family's coat of arms. Conclusions. Probably the most exciting thing about the new MVP feature with its native fixed foveated rendering is that VR users now have more options when looking for ways to improve the FPS we experience in a race. Not only that, but we now don't need to rely so much on third party tools or even the hidden delights of the Oculus debug tool. All in all, iRacing has delivered a feature to VR users that is an actual well thought out and useful quality of life improvement. And for that, I am at least very thankful. There are of course things that I wish I could do with the MVP feature, such as being able to move the center area, the foveated inset width picked down a bit a feature that would be particularly useful to drivers of open wheel cars where the resolution parameter area is often taking up far too much sky to be truly useful. That being said, open wheel or tin top car, you are going to see a performance improvement when using MVP and the native fixed foveated rendering inside iRacing. And as I have shown here in this video, you can even combine it with the tangent multiplier in the Oculus debug tool if you need even more performance, either on a lower spec system or when you are racing in the rain or at night or at night and in the rain. You get the point, you have options. And although you still need to experiment to find the right combination for your system, the settings I've outlined in this video should be a great starting point for most of you. If any of you are still having problems, 
with this MVP feature, please feel free to comment below and I will see if I can help you. Or you can pop over to the Discord channel that supports these videos and ask your questions there. Lastly, I wanted to talk about virtual desktop because whenever I create a video like this one, I get comments straight away that are in the region of virtual desktop for the win. And yes, I have tried it. And yes, I am quietly impressed with virtual desktop, but I am going to hold off creating a review video on virtual desktop until I have secured a dedicated router, preferably one that is 6E capable, so that I can show the full potential of this quite brilliant little app. But no fears, that review will happen soon. In the meantime, I hope you found this video helpful and until the next one, race clean and I'll see you on track. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the like button and if you haven't already done so, subscribe. Click the little bell icon if you want to be notified of any future videos.